we are building this Project Daihatsu Midget for the all new super cheap auto TV commercial for 2023. It's going to be absolutely massive, but we've got a whole lot of work to do, Martin. And just today to do it, because the car needs to be on the dyno tomorrow. So currently it has an EJDE engine mounted in there, which is hybrided up to the Midget gearbox, which we're really happy that it fits it all. We've had to swap some, swap heads, go to Japan, get the parts ourselves and fly them home in a box so we can make this work to hit a very, very tight deadline. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be epic if it works. Hang with us, people. This episode's gonna be huge. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We're working on a very, very unique project at the moment, which is this Daihatsu Midget, which I imported from Japan and now we've done a big block swap, but currently nothing else works. Uh, this is getting shipped up to Queensland uh, imminently for it to appear in the new Super Cheap Auto TV commercial. And we've got today to get it finished, Martin. We've just got today. And there's a whole lot of stuff missing. So it's a big job to get the engine mounted up. It's a, it is a front wheel drive engine that's never meant to be in this particular car. We hybrided a bunch of stuff to make it work and it is sitting in there, really happy with how it's looking, but no ECU, no wiring, no cooling system, no, petrol. no fuel system, uh, no firmware for the ECU to actually run it yet. So that's being made by a bunch of nerds out there to get it done. Uh, no, no exhaust even, Martin. No. We've got to work out whether we go inside, out the back. Uh, we've got Dave from Haltech coming down today to help us wire this thing up. Uh, as far as we know, I think there's only one other version of this engine in the world that's ever been kind of running off a Haltech before. So we got we got people in the background helping us get that together, getting the software firmware together. Martin, it's going to be big. First up, fuel tank out and in the bin. Well, not in the bin. We're going to keep. We're going to keep we're some of it. Uh, and then, um, and the good news and the bad news is that I'll be helping Dave with the wiring. I'll let him know that once he arrives. Let's get into it. Hey, Dave. Hey, man. How you doing? We got Dave here from Haltech. He is the wiring guru of all things. Um, he laughs at my soldering iron skills, and he should too. Shouldn't you? <laughs> I'm, there I'm neutral. I'm Switzerland <laughs> on this. Um, mate, what do we do? This, this, this engine's not meant to be in this truck. I imagine it's pretty simple because there's not a whole lot going on. What happens? What do we do? Uh, this should be real simple. Uh, all we're going to do is chop the plug off, the original harness. We're going to repin it for the new plug for the Haltech 550. We are going to pin out some things on the bench. We're going to look at the diagram. We're going to make sure it all is perfect. Then, don't know, under or above, we'll figure it out which way is the easiest way to plug it all in. Yeah. We might need maybe two relays, one for the ECU and injection system, one for the fuel pump. Is that it? And then we can figure out the rest of the interior stuff like a taco if it yeah, even okay. has one. So th this is this is simple? This should be very, very simple. Yep. Watch it not be simple. Yeah, yeah okay, cool. <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I'm helping you today, mate. I'm your apprentice. All right. Your coffee and, uh, and bacon and egg roll is on the way. Charge my batteries, let's go. <laughs> Luckily, Marty kept the engine loom when he pulled it out of the old mirror, so we don't have to start completely from scratch. But my old midget came with an old carby setup with about 50 less wires, so we'll still need to be customising a bunch of stuff. So I have the fuel pump out of the tank, and yes, it already looks a little bit different because I just thrashed through and did it. So originally, all this had was a little pickup tube, bang, that went on there. So I cut it off and I added a Raceworks fuel pump. So this is ethanol proof, and uh, but actually reasonably small, which is what we want for such a small engine. So this converts from old school carby pickup to high pressure EFI, and I can reutilize some of these original lines of vents, and I'm gonna use this as the return. So that's where the filler normally comes through when you fill the fuel up. In my truck, I did the same thing, and I teed back into this to use the fuel return. We'll run a regulator up the front. The tricky part is getting power into it because originally this never had any power. So you've got your gasket that goes through here and you need a way to get the wires out. But there is a clever way of doing it with these little sort of bulkhead mounts. So you drill a hole through the hanger. You put your wire through there. Thank you, Davo. You put your um, bolt through there. You've got these insulators, which prevents any fumes or, or fuel from getting out. And then on the other side, you then just plug this in and Dave very cleverly has made a little patch loom so we can make this whole unit as one and then just drop it straight into the existing midget tank. No further mods required. Add some fuel hose up to the front of the engine, add a regulator and a fuel, and a fuel filter and we're done. This is a really simple way of adding a high pressure fuel pump to an old carbide car. We did a similar thing with our RB26 240Z a few years back. You just need to get the fuel in and out and power and ground to the pump. This is the loom for our Daihatsu EJ 
D, E, engine, and each of these plugs corresponds to a component in the car's system that needs to be accessed either in or out via the Haltec ECU. Now, Dave, have you seen one of these before? Definitely not. Seen Definitely one of these not. Um, I think it's this is kind here. of like a JDM export thing okay. only. But because he is the wizard of all things wiring, can you do your best to try and interpret what each of these things are and where they go? My best guess for what we have is our crank sensor, crank sensor in, maybe idle control out, maybe map sensor in, throttle position sensor in, air temperature in, our three injectors out. This is our alternator light. This might be a knock control or a oil pressure light. I think this is our coolant temp sensor and this will either be the other plug. This will be oil pressure or our uh, knock. We've got two grounds to ground the actual loom and our three coil connectors. And this is where our fuel pump signal comes from. Maybe taco out, maybe power. And then there's our ECU plug. So, all of these plugs are currently going down here yes. <clears throat> into that plug, Yes. but we're going to be repinning that into a Haltech plug, and then that there is what goes into the ECU. So basically, yes. this is going to stay, but that bit is going in the pit. Yes, you are. It would be possible to use the factory ECU for something like this, but make sure you check if there's an immobiliser circuit that works with the original key. We're future-proofing this project by adding a basic aftermarket ECU to enable us to retune it when needed. This also gives us the capability to add boost if we want to turbocharge it later down the road when we have more time, something we definitely don't have right now. Repeating the factory loom for the Haltech ECU is probably the simplest way to do this, especially if you can lay it out on a bench like we've done. With the help of some Daihatsu and Haltech diagrams, we can cross-reference where each wire needs to go. We just need to do this for about 35 wires and then hopefully it should work. So we have just finished creating our loom. It is almost done. This here was the original Daihatsu plug and we have now, uh, we think we've worked out what almost everything is and we've repinned it to Haltech plug. And what we also learned during this time is that my friend Dave here can strip and pin a wire exactly three times faster than me. Well done. I've done thousands and thousands of these at least. I've done, one, two, three, four, five, about 30. Yeah. Um, great. Tell me what's going on here, because that looks like a speaker install I did when I was a teenager. Uh, unless you worked in this factory in Japan, I don't think this is your install, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't, I've never seen ignition wires like this before, to be honest, so this is something different for me, but uh, we just need to figure out what order these coils go in. Yeah. Because I don't know if this is one, two, three, or if this is one, two, three, or... Or if that one, yes. Or if it's like, yeah, I just don't know. So we'll get it on the engine, we'll figure out what's what, and then we'll pin coil one, two, three into the plug when we know where things need to go. I've got this. But we don't have this. Yeah, so we don't have the other end of this because that would have been in a dash of a car that no longer exists. I think so, yeah. So there's like relay power that comes in and there's signals that go out, but we don't know what this is, so I'll make something else different here. So I'll put probably a relay like, for a fuel pump. We'll make something else different and it'll work. I'll put a fuel pump relay here, we'll put an ECU relay here, and we'll put a Deutsch plug with a couple of wires on it that need to go to the alternator light, the oil, oil light. pressure sensor light, which is what this pin here actually ended up being. Yep. I thought this might have been the starter, but it actually ended up being the oil pressure switch. So yep. I still don't know what these are, but we'll figure them out very, very soon. Um, and we'll put, yeah, we'll put these two on a Deutsch connector until we figure out what these are as well, so we can just isolate them. But yeah, two relays, a Deutsch connector with a couple of wires, and then we can get it in the car and see what doesn't fit. Being carbureted, the midget only ever ran low pressure fuel into the bowl. We're about to have fuel injectors which need 40 psi of pressure behind them to spray the dinosaur juice where it needs to go. The fuel pump will be sucking and sending the fuel into the rail and the regulator on the other side will hold the pressure stable and increase it at a one-to-one -one ratio as we add boost. The EFI conversion is nearly complete. 
So there's the upgraded fuel hanger with the aftermarket high pressure pump. We've got the return. Now it's all really small lines. Luckily this is a really small engine, so it should work, but we don't know yet. So what we're gonna do next is install this back into the tank and hotwire the pump, connect the whole fuel system. And even though we can't actually start the car yet, that will tell us if there's any leaks. So it's nice to be able to do that in advance before the rest of the car goes back together. That gives me time to troubleshoot because we are running out of time, half a day left. Okay, so what I've done is I've utilized the factory line. So we've got fuel coming into the reg. Then we're going back out of the reg through a filter. Now, normally you'd put the filter before, so potentially I'll move it if I need to, but anyway, I'm happy with that for now. Uh, I'm also adapting from quarter inch lines to 516th or 6.5 mil to 8 mil in the new money. That's because the rail has an 8 mil adapter and the fuel filter is 8 mil, but everything else is 6.5. So at some point I have to adapt it out. To test it, I'm gonna run that up to the fuel rail, plug that in, and then plug this in, and then turn it all on and see what happens. just ever so slightly too long. Luckily, to fix it, all I gotta do is shorten that tube and move the pump up, but yeah, I just measured it wrong. All right, we're gonna try this again. And hopefully, now that I've shortened everything, it's gonna fit. Come on, midget. Yes. Oh, we're good. I think we're good. Yep, it's happy as now. Awesome. Bolt that down. Let's see if it works. Moment of truth, the tank is in. I haven't bolted it in yet in case I've got to drop it back down again. Dave's got a magic machine that sends power down wires. So we're going to send power down wires into the fuel pump. Everything is plugged in. And then this is a good time just to check for leaks. So we're going to prime it and just see if fuel comes out of anywhere, any hoses blow off. Now's the time we want that to happen, not when we're trying to start it. Okay, tank's coming out. I failed. I didn't do the connectors through the top of the fuel hat properly. So they're most likely shorting out. So I've got to do something different, which I'll work out. I will take you. It turns out I didn't drill the holes big enough for the terminals, so they were shorting. Luckily for me, without sparking in the process. Whoops. All right, fixed my uh, dumb mistake, and now I'm gonna try again. Here we go. Round two. So now the uh, wiring is not shorting out because of my dumb mistake and we're gonna see if there's fuel pressure throughout the system. Could still leak at multiple points, so this is why I wanna find out and see if it'll prime up. See what the reg's doing, see what all these lines are doing, make sure my connections are tight. Three, two, one. Are you ready? Yep. Can feel fuel flowing into everything. Well. Can hear it all. I mean, as long as those injectors are closed, there's no fuel leaking. Can't smell any fuel. Yeah, it's spinning the right way because you have, and because you've we've wired directly from the pump through your wiring, so we know exactly which way it goes. We don't have to guess. Great. All right, we're good. It's drawing the right amount of current. We're good to go. So the stage that we're up to now is we need to try and get coolant into this thing and then the last step is exhaust out. But we can start and run with that coolant just to make sure it's actually going to trigger and go but we can't run it for very long. So if we can get some coolant stuff happening while Dave is finishing the wiring, then we're in luck. We have no idea if this motor works, do we? No idea if this motor works. I mean, I drove it years ago and it kind of worked but in this configuration, laying over on its side, which they've never been done as far as we know, uh, it's a little different. So we do have this pipe off the midget which meets up with the radiator hoses at the front and also so runs weird. the heater. So weird. Yeah, that so that all matches up. So now it's a matter of going, where does this go? We think in the midget it went back to the block here somewhere but on the... Uh, the configuration that we've used, it actually pops out from the top. So we can just run a hose down to it if that in fact is correct. But up here is where it gets a bit weird because it's a front wheel drive engine. So we've got two outlets or an inlet and an outlet on the same side. So we've actually got three. So instead of an engine having one in, one out, it's got one in and two out or two in and one out. We don't actually know. 
uh, but we just have to figure it out. Uh, and then after that, uh, exhaust. So just got to work out, look how small it is. It's tiny, isn't it's like it? like that one. <laughs> got to work out whether we go just out the side for time and for efficiency or whether it goes yeah. out the back. Side pipe's kind of cool. And going to look best on telly. But side pipe's kind of cool. That'd be awesome, especially if it pops some flames. This is now just total freestyling. But if we can get coolant in one side and out the other without any annoying airlocks or leaks, we'll be one step closer to our goal of creating the world's fastest Daihatsu midget. All right, so Chop. that plumbing that was required for the heater has been chopped. It's going to work. Look at that. Because the question is, people, would a car on Fast and the Furious have a heater? Would it have air conditioning? If they don't need it, we don't need it either. Dude, they don't even, they don't even have brakes. No. <laughs> Jesse at Race Wars, he didn't even have brake calipers. He's in a Honda. <laughs> But no, seriously. Never needing to stop anyway. It was interesting when we went and worked in the audit, the cars department for the Fast and Furious films with, uh, with Dennis, absolute legend. What a boss. Um, yeah, I mean, when you're pumping out cars to get them done for, for a movie and, and to get things sort of working for that, it's different goals. But I yeah. what I would say is we haven't shortcut anything in terms of if you want to spend another week on this car to make it a daily, you absolutely could. Like the air conditioning, because it comes with a basic air conditioning system, will work with this engine. You can put, there's room for an aircon compressor. Uh, there's not the provision for it on our EJ, but the EF that we played with in Japan, it's the same. So you could plug that in. Um, yeah, all those creature comforts, no worries. Because it's the middle of summer, we're also going to bypass the heater core. Uh, you can just run extra pipes for that, but at the same time, we can also just join these pipes together and it's just we don't have to worry about it. And the less things we can worry about for now, the better. Martin, have a look at this. So that hose there, I've put that on, that perfectly lines up with that. And the the original mounting point for that oh, yeah, is right perfect. there. Yep. And so now we just got to work out what happens when all of the well, coolant comes out of here. I've got an idea. How about we use the JDM blocker, which is on the, came from the Japanese engine. Why don't we install that blocker onto it? I don't know how it's going to stand up against uh, coolant pressure, but you know what, just for testing, I reckon that's going to be fine to run yep. a bit of water through and see what happens. Got We've got a th one thermostat is what we want. And uh, yeah. Fingers crossed. We just need one hose to go from the top, which you're gonna to have to raise the parts bin uh, and just see what we can get to join that up to the front. Right. On most cars that aren't Daihatsu midgets, you have a top and bottom radiator connection. Hot coolant goes into the radiator, it gets cooled down, then back into the engine. Because of the Frankenstein nature of our system, it's actually got three connections, so we have to block one, but we have no way of knowing which way to run it without trying it. So we're gonna take a guess and hope it doesn't airlock and cook our engine. Next, we're gonna drop it back down so we can put in a fresh set of spark plugs. Then Dave can fit up the wiring loom. Then once we've put oil in it, we can see if we can try and make it crank. is finished because Dave is a wizard. Smashed it. The coolant lines are on thanks to bits of hose, clamps, a door stopper, <laughs> a foot off a chair and a, an angle grinder. A bit of hose from an EZ30 which is kind of cool. Uh, so we want to crank it and just make sure that there's oil circulation, there's no leaks, there's nothing weird. This is easier to do outside the car. We can do it outside the car because the way it's been wired up. Uh, just basically activate the starter motor and make sure everything turns as it should before we put it into the engine bay for the last time. Because this is now, this is three different cars just here, isn't it? And they're not meant to go together. No. So. Yeah. All right, let's give it a crank. Shall we? Got a magic, see what happens. It's got a magic button there. Let's see what happens to our Do you want to hold this side? Ready? Set? Yep. So, click but doesn't rotate. Why? It doesn't work. It just doesn't. <laughs>